Yes, Krispy Kreme going public. This is the second time around for the company. Went public back in 2000, but years later, the stock had tumbled following an accounting scandal and underwent a restructuring. Then in 2016, it was taken private by JAB through a $1.35 billion acquisition. Today, it is listing on the NASDAQ under the ticker DNUT after its IPO priced at $17 per share. Should say it's below the expected range. We want to talk about that as well. Joining us right now, first on CNBC from its Times Square location, Krispy Kreme CEO Mike Tattersfield. Mike, it's great to see you this morning. I've got the donuts here. Uh, we're eating a lot of them, so thank you for that. Uh, but it is a big day for you. No. Let, let's talk about the offering, and I want to talk about the future of the business. Go, go ahead. What were you going to say? Yeah, no, it, it's a great day for us. I'm, uh, it's an 84-year-old brand. And, you know, as you think about it, we're always trying to build the most love sweet treat brand in the world. The transformation that this uh, company's done in the last five years has been incredible. We've worked on our brand. We've worked on the culture. And we actually changed the business model. And we really created an omni-channel approach uh, where we leverage these amazing donut shops like the one I'm in today and then really get fresh donuts to where the customers are. So that's what we've been doing, and it's been an incredible ride so far. Mike, I want to talk to you about the valuation because it did come in lower than expected in terms of where you thought you were going to be with investors even just days ago. What happened? Uh, listen, five years ago, we came in and bought the business for a little north of a, a billion dollars. The value today is two and a half times um, uh, the value of when we purchased the company. So when we talked to investors and they saw that we doubled the revenue and doubled the EBITDA during this uh, time frame, they really loved the traction that we're doing and the journey ahead, both in the United States market as well as global, because it's about this uh, shared occasions. We sell in dozens. And we really drive occasions. We do that exceptionally well and just deliver donuts and build it in gifting. And Andrew, I know you got a lot of dozens in your house right now, but you, you can share them as well. Trust me, we, we, I'm going to have to gift a lot of these away. Um, I can't eat all of this. But uh, the question I ask in terms of expansion, uh, you've been growing, you've been growing fast. Um, the question is, are you growing at the expense of profit in terms of net profit? So if you, if you think about it, when we doubled the EBITDA, you know, doubled the revenue and doubled the EBITDA, one of the things that we did in the transformation on the brand, um, uh, we used to be a franchisor, franchisee in the U.S. We bought back the system. Um, uh, so we have a controlled system where 85 percent of the system today in the U.S. is where we uh, make our donuts. We then use our 400 donut shops, our theater shop. There's only 400 in the world. I love that, right? So the aspect of keeping the donuts special. But instead of opening up random donut shops everywhere, we actually use an omni-channel approach. So we leverage these theater shops, which are amazing. I'm sure you've been in it when you see our hot light or our glaze line. And then follow where the customer's at. So take the journey, whether it's a fresh shop in, uh, in New York City where we actually produce here and then send donuts to them, an e-commerce model where the consumer can uh, order gifting or delivery, as well as in the wholesale space where we now deliver fresh donuts to select grocers or select convenience shops around the globe. So, Mike, I, I don't know if this is a hard question or not, and I don't know what to do about it. But in, in a day and age where people are supposed to be moving away from carbs, right, carbs and sugar, this is a 190-calorie uh, treat, uh, but you typically eat more than one. What, what do you think just trend-wise in terms of the movement away, frankly, from treats and what that does or what that may mean or not to your business long term? So I love the indulgent space and Krispy Kreme works incredibly well right within it. Our customers engage us about two and a half times a year and they engage us on occasions. So as you're having those dozens, it's about shared dozens um, uh, that we focus on celebration gifting. And the customer is always looking for a sweet treat. And I know the world's uh, not a really good place um, uh, and a bland place if you don't have a sweet treat. So it's really about the opportunity of uh, how do we build on that. We're really proud of what we do. And if you can get on occasions, and you think about gifting, you know, Mother's Day that just came by. If you can have a little kid basically send their mom a dozen donuts, we compete against flowers, right? It's a whole different occasion. It's celebrations. It's an amazing part of what this brand does. 
again, those theater shops that are so special, right. but doing fresh donuts everywhere. I'll give you one little snapshot. Last year, we sold 1.3 billion donuts. I love that. It's great. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.